I'm going to talk about the properties of water today. You're going to need your um, interactive notes and you're going to want to complete them as you listen to this video and follow along with me. There are two types of molecules um, that are found in all living things. The first type is an organic molecule and it's going to be one that contains carbon like sugar. Um, sugar has carbon in it. And the other kind of molecule is an inorganic one, and that is one that does not have carbon in it, and that would be water. So think of what you know of chemical formulas um, from the past science classes you might have had. Sugar, um, C6H12O6, water is H2O. So you can tell right away uh, which one is organic and which one is inorganic. Now, is chocolate organic or inorganic based on the chemical formula? So the chemical formula of chocolate is C7H8 and 4O2. So what do you think? Is it organic or is it inorganic? If you said organic, you are correct because it contains carbon. Let's look at the molecular makeup of water. The chemical formula for water is H2O, like I just said, and it, you will notice right here, this is the um, diagram of a water molecule, and it looks a lot like Mickey Mouse. Um, water is made up of three atoms. It has one oxygen, which is right here, and it has two hydrogen up here. That would be Mickey's ears. So what I need you to do right now is draw a water molecule in the box that's in your notes. Uh, make it look like Mickey, like this, or you can simply represent it with uh, lines like that. That is supposed to be an H. Okay, so the reason it has this structure, the reason it looks like Mickey Mouse water, it looks like that because um, it's due to its polarity. And we're going to talk about polarity in detail in a few moments. Okay, so water molecules are polar. And the reason they are polar is because they have a partially positive side and then they have a partially negative side. Uh, you need to know that polarity is caused by the uneven distributions of electrons between the oxygen and the hydrogen atoms, and that's what's creating those charges. So you got to keep in mind that we are talking about the H2O molecule that, again, we just say it looks like Mickey Mouse. So we have a partially positive and partially negative. As far as which side is positive and which side is negative, um, the positive end is your hydrogen and the negative end is the oxygen. So um, if you would like to go ahead and label that on your drawing, you can. It's definitely something you will need to know later, um, but not necessarily for our class right now. And this is what we use in chemistry to represent um, the negative and positive poles. So now that you understand um, or have an explanation of what polarity is, the rest of this discussion is going to be surrounded by or focusing on the consequences for polarity. So these characteristics occur because water is polar. Hydrogen bonding, cohesion, surface tension, adhesion, capillary action, and the fact that water is a universal solvent, all of these things happen because of polarity, that unequal distribution of electrons. Okay, we're going to talk about mag uh, hydrogen bonding first. And just like with magnets, opposites attract. Uh, so you have a positive end right here, and you have a negative end here, and these two are attracted to each other. The positive hydrogen and the negative oxygen, they create this hydrogen bond. The positive end is, a, that's just what I said, this electrical attraction uh, between the water molecules is giving you this bond right here. The atoms that make up a water molecule are in a constant tug of war over their shared electrons. 
oxygen exerts a far stronger pull on the shared electrons than does hydrogen. And so the electrons spend more of their time closer to the oxygen atom. Because of this unequal sharing of electrons, the oxygen atom in a water molecule actually has a slight negative charge, and each hydrogen atom has a slight positive charge, even though the water molecule as a whole is neutral. Because of the unequal sharing of electrons and the resulting positive and negative poles, a water molecule is said to be polar. The polarity of water molecules causes them to be attracted to each other. Since the positively charged atom involved in this special type of attraction is always a hydrogen atom, this kind of bond between molecules is called a hydrogen bond. Each water molecule can hydrogen bond to four other water molecules. A hydrogen bond is weak and lasts only a tiny fraction of a second, but it takes a lot of energy to overcome the combined attraction of many hydrogen bonds. This explains water's great capacity to store heat, its high boiling point, surface tension, and several other unusual properties. Let's talk about cohesion. Cohesion is the attraction between two water molecules. Cohesion, uh, cohesive substances are gonna stick together. So you're going to have water sticking to water and that's how you get a water drop. Um, this is seen with surface tension. The property of the surface of a liquid allows it to resist the external force and due to the cohesive, uh, that is all due to the cohesive nature of the water molecules. So if you look at the two images, you will see uh, what we call a water strider. And that is an organism that is, um, doesn't, break the surface tension because of cohesion and it looks like it can walk on the water. And the opposite of cohesion is adhesion. Adhesion is the attraction between water and then another substance. Um, if you look at this image right here, you will see the water droplet uh, that is forming a sphere and then it's attached to the plant leaf. Uh, that leaf and the water it is hold, held on to each other by adhesion or adhesive forces. And if you look at the silk spider web, you will see the same thing. All those water droplets there are holding on to the silk um, because of adhesion. So what happens is water makes hydrogen bonds with the other surfaces like the gla like glass, soil, the plants, cotton, and um, that is what allows the two to stick together. By looking into the invisible world of high speed, we discover extraordinary events, even in something as ordinary as a garden plant. These little creatures, water striders, had long been a bit of a mystery. Nobody could work out quite how they could propel themselves across the surface of the water so quickly. They can scoot forward nearly two meters every second. And they're achieving something of biblical proportions actually walking on water, skating across the surface without sinking. Only by seeing what time usually renders invisible to us can we understand what's really going on. And it's got something to do with what's about to happen here. Clearly, this is too fast to see. But watch what happens in slow motion as the droplet of milk hits the water surface. stretches, bouncing the milk drop back up into the air. The water 
also behaves as if it has a thin elastic film on the surface. It's called surface tension. And it's this elastic membrane that allows the water strider to stand on the water rather than sinking into it. He's also using that elastic surface tension to catapult himself across the pond at the equivalent of about 600 miles an hour. In colored water, we can see the force of the strider's legs as they push across the surface. The high-speed artist of the invisible world. To us, this is just a pond, but to the water strider, it's a giant trampoline. Capillary action is the ability of water to basically just move up against gravity. Um, this is how plants move water through their stalks, like you see with the celery. Um, they move them up in the process of transpiration. Do a little example of capillary action and, uh, uh, well, just how nature gets the uh, water into the tops of its plants and how the how the plants are supported hydraulically through capillary action. <clears throat> Here is uh, about two cups of water. I'm gonna really douse her up good. It'll probably leak out the bottom. Soak in real nice. It's already coming out the bottom. I have not even put a cup of water in. I'm going to keep soaking it. All right, so let's look at this comic. By all means, I've set up a test using the hardest, toughest, most impervious substances known to mankind. Observe one drop. So the drop goes through the lead, goes through the iron, goes through the steel, the tungsten, the carbide, the titanium, impervium, a Disney contract. Mr. McDuck, I give you the universal solvent. So universal solvent, what that means is it can dissolve other hydrophilic which is a water loving substance such as salt, acids, sugars, bases, gases. It cannot dissolve nonpolar or hydrophobic, which is water fearing molecules. Most cell components include proteins, poly, uh, polysaccharides, DNA, all these things dissolve in water and that's what makes it the basis of life. So water is the universal solvent. 
one of the unique properties of water is that it is the universal solvent. This property is important to every living thing on Earth because it means that wherever water travels, either through the air, the ground, or through our bodies, it takes along important chemicals, minerals, and nutrients. The property of water being the universal solvent happens when it pulls apart molecules. A contradiction to this property is oil. Oil can't be dissolved in water because it is a non-polar molecule. Water only dissolves polar molecules like itself. A saying that can help you remember that is, like dissolves like. Water can dissolve many different substances, which is why it is such a good solvent, 